Um, there's some contact info for me, but I've got that at the end as well, so we'll gloss over that a little bit. Now, more specific to what, um, what uh, people here might be more interested in is the commodity price cycle. Now, I'm wondering whether, who's heard of, I would assume more people than most places where I talk, nobody's ever heard of Nikolai Kontradiev, but um, considering that most of us here are involved in the market or, or, or mining uh, sectors, has, who's heard of um, Nikolai Kondratiev? Can people tell me? Yes, okay, yeah, that's good. So, so I assume that um, at least there's some knowledge here about him. Nikolai, just, just briefly, Nikolai Kondratiev was an economist. He was a Russian economist, and he was in charge of the Agricultural Bureau he was in charge of the Agricultural Bureau in Moscow in the 1920s. And it was Comrade Stalin that had determined during the 1920s, and Lenin himself whilst he was alive, they had determined that communism would end up taking over the world. And they asked Nikolai Kondratiev to do a study of Western economies to determine when the next collapse in Western economies would happen. Because in those days, if you went to, a, if you went to university, you went to college and studied economics, you essentially studied cycles. And everybody knew that Western economies had a cyclical variation, largely driven a lot by uh, farming cycles and mining cycles. So Comrade Stalin asked Nikolai if he would research Western economies to try and tell Comrade Stalin when the next Western collapse would happen so that then um, communism would take over the world. Well, as we know, that didn't quite eventuate. But here's what Nikolai found. He discovered, he had a look at commodity prices going back, way back to about 1760 or so, and he discovered that commodity, price, commodity prices up until the 1920s had moved in a very regular 54 to 60 year cycle. Now he studied wheat, he, studied, uh, he also studied interest rates, he studied uh, uh, pig iron, he studied all of the commodities that they used in those days, beans and, and the major economies, and the major co uh, commodities. And he found that commodity prices had peaked around about 1819. They then troughed in the 1840s. They peaked again around the 1860s. They peaked again around, at the bottom around the 1890s. And in Kondratiev's day, they had been rising for several years and were peaking in the 1920s. Now, Nikolai Kondratiev wrote a book in Russian in the 1920s. It was called The Long Wave of Economic Life. It was translated in the 1930s by another American economist, Joseph Schumpeter. When you get to see the translation, you'll see that Nikolai went ahead and he forecast quite accurately that Western economies would end up uh, having a, a, a terrible depression in the 1930s, but he also went ahead and, and said that they would recover uh, quite substantially. Now, for his troubles for saying that things would recover, Nikola, um, Comrade Stalin accused him of being in the Workers' Peasant Party because it wasn't what Comrade Stalin wanted to hear and he was sent to the Siberian salt mines where he died in solitary confinement. Um, quite a shame, really, but uh, um, that's what happens to some economists, I guess. I went ahead and researched this. This is actually how I started my business, and I had quite a number of mining companies in Australia as subscribers back in the early 1990s, and I was suggesting to them that they had to, if history was repeating, they'd have to tighten their belts a little bit because we were going to get a decade of very low commodity prices. And so, this was actually, this diagram and much of what you've just heard, I actually talked about first in a speech I gave to the Solar Energy uh, Commission in 1995 in Hobart. So if you want to see, if you want to see uh, or read some of that old speech, you can, go to, you can go to that URL and you'll find this diagram and a whole heap about com commodity waves and Nikolai uh, back there. But briefly, you can see that uh, I was expecting commodity prices to bottom in the year 2000. If that was to be the case, it's my expectation that then there'll be another so-called Kondratiev wave or a commodity price cycle that should run, they generally run 30 years up, 30 years down. We've had the 30 years down from 1970s to the 1990s. I think we're in at the very start or just 10 years into a very bullish commodity cycle, which I think will run to about the year 2030. So contrary to what a lot of people are saying, um, I actually think it's an extremely bullish scenario and I also happen to think, based on history repeating, if that's the case, more wealth will be created in the next 20 years than the world has ever seen in its entire history. Mining, mining companies, farmers are at the forefront of that. 
and there, in my view, will be likely to, to benefit from, from that particular up move, and I think it's a great time to be mining, great time, great time to be farming. I did say that more wealth would be created than in the next 20 years than ever before. When I say that, when I talk to, when I talk to Westerners, as distinct from, Asian, from, from those in the Asian area, um, when, I, when I talk over here, England, the UK, when I use the word wealth, most people start thinking about their house price and shares. But house prices and shares are not wealth. They are a claim upon wealth. And so usually in the up moves of commodities as we go upwards, um, in, the, in, in the cycles we're at at the moment, house prices, real house prices usually go, often go sideways and stock prices have a hard trouble going up as well. But commodity prices do, do, do extraordinarily well. And that goes a little bit back to what Chris Watling was saying uh, yesterday morning. Uh, I, have a, I have a similar view there, that you're not likely to see huge gains from here in stock prices or house prices, but you will see large gains in, in um, commodities. A um, couple of things before I finish up, just a minute or two. On the upside of the wave, how you know you're in the upside of the wave is um, it's very profitable for miners and for farmers but it's extremely unprofitable for people who live in cities because all they see is food prices going up. When you see food prices going up, you'll see people in cities usually having riots. And it's usually also a very democratic process, a very democratic procedure. People don't like being dictated to. They're, they're struggling with higher prices for food. You'll often see revolts happen. This is what happened between 1940s to the 1973. It happened between 1896 and 1919. And it's been absolutely no surprise to me to see in the Arab world at the moment, although you'd ne I'd never have forecast where and what, but in the Arab world, world at the moment, experiencing huge price gains, they're sick of it and they're, and they're having a lot to say about it. That, that does tell me we are in the midst of a Contra-DF wave. Um, so I won't, I won't go much more on about that because I'd like to leave just a couple of minutes for questions, but I urge you to study this because I think this cycle is going to repeat. I'm extremely bullish for what's coming along. Now that's what I've given you today is a little bit of an unconventional economics, but this I think is much easier to follow. If you, if you study these two particular cycles, you'll have absolutely no trouble working out what happens uh, each particular year going forward. How much longer have I got? Well, that's a couple of minutes. All right, I'd like to finish up with giving you if, you, if you want to follow up some information about what I've got, um, you can, you can, those websites or my, uh, or my blog will give you plenty of uh, information to have a look at. I'd like to finish up with a sort of a story about why I continue to be so bullish. Um, I have a 10 year old and uh, we, we uh, he, he's in school in France. I live in, I live in France half the year. It's a great place to retire to, I can tell you. Um, we were playing, I've been trying to teach him Monopoly because I'm trying to teach him how the capitalist economic system works. Um, it's also a great way to learn about banks. Um, I told him just a couple of weeks ago we were having our first couple of games and, and uh, I, naturally I was winning of course because he'd only just learning how to play. For his birthday a couple of months back I bought him an iPhone. He's only 10 but that's what he wanted. It took him 30 seconds to work out how to use it. Once I, give, once I gave him the code to get onto the internet, it took him another 30 seconds to get to the iPhone app store to then start begging me to, to download Angry Birds. The kids, they, they grab at these things so quickly it's astonishing. Now, the third game. He's, he's just been thrashed the previous two games. The third game, he didn't want to lose. and I, We were halfway through and he was losing. I saw a big smile come over his face. So he went downstairs, he got his iPhone. And as he was playing, he, he typed into his iPhone, how to beat father at Monopoly. And then he started typing in how to be the best player in the world at Monopoly, how to win at Monopoly, all those sorts of things. And he was reading that as he was playing. Now, in my view, think about, you know, I'm, I'm old enough to see the last cycle in 1991 and 1974. Um, when you think about the technology over the last 15 years, even the last 10 years, I think it's been astonishing. And I think the technology that's coming forward and more that's going to happen, which is a classic upside of the Kondratiev wave, relentless technological innovation. This, in the end, will supersede the debt problems. And once we get moving again, nobody's going to be thinking about debts once we get on the, once we get on the way for the next cycle. So I'll leave it there. If anybody, or if we've got time for any questions, uh, questions are always good because then I can open up a little bit about what's happening uh, and we'll see how we go. So thanks for the opportunity to talk today. It's been, it's been good.